We're in the ancient Agora of Athens, and one of the things I love about the lands of the book is that the Bible can be our textbook, the Holy Spirit our teacher, and the classroom becomes the event in the scriptures. I'm going to read from Acts 17 and just kind of point in the direction as we read the scripture. You follow along in your Bible. You might even want to circle some of these places, and you'll see before your eyes uh, this, this event. Acts chapter 17, verse 16. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. And remember, Paul had already walked from the port of Piraeus, six miles up here, following the sacred way through the main gates of the city. And he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and in the Gentile worshipers and in the marketplace. The word marketplace in Greek is what you see all around me here. The agora is called the gathering place. And it says, with those who happen to be there. So verse 17, so key, every day with those who were walking through the heart of the city. Now exactly behind me is the gymnasium. Behind that is the music hall, the Odeon. Back behind over to your right is the long stoa which is most likely what I'll mention in a moment, where the, those from behind you, the Mars Hill area or the Areopagus, those people started meeting back there in that Stoa. But it says in verse 18, then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him out here in the marketplace. And some said, what does this babbler say? Verse 18. Others said, he seems to be proclaiming foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection and they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak, for you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore we want to know what these things are and what they mean. For all Athenians and foreigners were either spending their time in nothing else but to tell or to hear some new thing. And Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For I was passing through and I considered the objects of your worship. I even found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. Now even in this Agora today, there are altars. You can see the bases to them. There are altars all around. And basically 600 years before Paul, there had been a huge plague in Athens. They had sent to the island of Crete to get the philosopher, whose name was Epimenides, and said, what do we do for the plague? Some God has been offended and Epimenides said, the way you find out is you get a flock of sheep, you release them into the Agora, wherever they lay down, sacrifice them and build an altar and write on it to the unknown God. Paul said, therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, the one you were trying to reach out to with all those little idol uh, altars, him I proclaim to you. Now look at verse 24 in your Bible. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things, and has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. He has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him. He is not far from each of us my favorite verse in this whole passage. Paul was saying to all those who gathered in this stoa, just reach out and God is within arm's reach of every one of you. Reach out to him. He's not, as it says in verse 27, far from you. Verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our beings as also some of your own poets have said, for we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art or man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. And for those of you that are in our course, you know that that is the 16th time in the book of Acts that the gospel is presented. And gospel number 16 is all everywhere repent. Verse 31. He has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. By the man whom he ordained, he has given assurance to this by, by raising him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, 
some mocked. Others said, we will hear you again on this matter. Verse 33, so Paul departed from among them. However, some men joined him and believed, among them Dionysius the Areopagite and a woman named Damaris and others with them. The scriptures are so beautiful in giving us this classroom where Paul said, you don't need idols, temples, Temple of Hephaestus over there, the beautiful stoa behind me, all those altars around, that God is just an arm's length from every one of you. Acts 17, 17 to 31, right here in ancient Athens. <laughs>